Hey, Yvonne community. So I promise this is going to be the last video I do about the Get Back documentary or the Get Back sessions. I know there's videos all over the internet, but I wanted to kind of take a little bit of a different spin on it. I wanted to talk a little bit about what John Lennon thought about the Let It Be project, the Let It Be album, the Get Back sessions, and look at what he basically said about it in interviews after uh, the Get Back project was over, right around the time that the Let It Be album was released. So around the time of the Abbey Road album, he had given some interviews, and basically he was just talking about the fact that the Get Back project had been postponed and they couldn't really uh, agree on what the album was going to look like, and that's why it had been pushed back. It was supposed to be released before Abbey Road, and then it ended up getting released after Abbey Road. So here's a little bit of an interview that he gave shortly after Abbey Road album came out, and there were rumors about the Let It Be project and what that was going to look like at the time. It was still called Get Back, but here's just a little bit of what John had to say then. Which Beatles album? What is this original? Mm, yeah, Get Back. It was the one that was scheduled for before Abbey Road, but now it's after it to tie it up with the film, which is a documentary of us suffering, making the thing. <laughs> Why suffering? Well, we'll go to hell. We often do, you know. Wow, and I don't understand. Well, to most people, it looks like, you know, wow, it's so great, the four of you just get into a studio and you make music. It's torture. It's torture. Every time we produce anything, you know, I mean, any uh, artist, poet, or anything, whatever you call yourselves, listening, know what it's like. Well, the Beatles haven't got any magic you haven't got. You know. We suffer like hell every time we make anything. I mean, get a fish and blow, you know, stuff it. And we've got each other to contend with. Imagine working with the Beatles, man. It's <laughs> tough scene. Whose songs will be on the album? Get no, uh, yeah, back on Well, it's so sort of old, I don't know. It's uh, all of us, you know. I mean, we've, we've done... There's all... It's, it's a strange album, you know. It's like uh, unfinished. We never finished it. We started off with this intention of doing a TV show or something. And it went on and on and on and... We didn't really want to do it, and uh, Paul was hustling for us to do it, and we didn't really want to do it. We never did it, and we never finished the album, so we put out, like, we never quite finished the songs. We put it out like that, and there's bits of us mumbling and chatting and singing old rockers and all sorts of messing about. <laughs> but there's a very nice sort of improvised quality yeah, about it. Yeah, it's the Beatles with their suits off, you know. How do you decide as to whose songs get on now that George seems to be right? For it. We hustle for it. I and mean, in the old days, Paul and I won. That's the problem. I mean, I don't know personally whether there will ever be any more Beatle product with the four of us on again, you know. I mean, that's a decision we make every time, but it gets harder. Because now, in the old days, Paul and I just stick, you know, write most of the songs because George wasn't prolific. You know. We encouraged him to an extent, you know. Subconsciously, we would have just made sure we got the LP for ourselves. Yeah. So now he is prolific. Now there's three of us all trying to squash ourselves onto that 14 tracks. And so right around the time that the Let It Be movie and the Let It Be album were released, Paul McCartney announced as part of the press release package for his solo album, McCartney, that he was leaving the Beatles. And that definitely... Uh, put kind of a dark pallor over the entire Let It Be movie release. When the movie came out, most people were aware that the Beatles had already broken up, so it was definitely a swan song for the Beatles. And I think John really resented the fact that Paul had used that press release to announce the breakup of the Beatles, unbeknownst to the rest of the band. He did it out of the blue. They found out they were kind of blindsided by, by that, even though John... Uh, apparently at a Apple meeting in the fall of 1969, announced to the rest of the group that he wanted to leave the band. But Alan Klein and the other Beatles convinced them to stay because Alan Klein was in the middle of negotiating a higher royalty rate for Beatle albums going forward. And so he didn't want John rocking the boat and spoiling those negotiations. So John kept it quiet. And then a few months later, Paul announces that he's leaving the Beatles and John was righteously pissed 
because he had was really technically the first one to say, I'm out of here, I want a divorce. And so I think that really colors a lot of what John had to say about the Let It Be album at the time. There's a famous interview that John gave in 1970 with Jan Wenner from Rolling Stone, where if you've heard the interview or you've read the interview, it was published in the pages of Rolling Stone under the title Lennon Remembers. But basically, he pretty much excoriated everybody in the Beatles, other musicians. It was just a real downer of an interview. John seemed to be pissed at the entire world and was kind of lashing out at everybody. He disparaged the Beatles. He disparaged the Rolling Stones. He disparaged Bob Dylan. It seemed like nobody was safe from John's rap. And in that interview, he talks about the Let It Be project and... He, I think you can really tell he held a lot of, or at the time he held a lot of resentment towards Paul McCartney because Paul McCartney had left the band and, um, you know, it was sort of, he felt, um, kind of betraying the rest of the Beatles that way. And so I think he kind of took that out on the Let It Be project and, you know, a year had passed since the events of the Get Back sessions, actually over a year. And so I think some of his memory was a bit clouded by the fact that he was still angry over how the Beatles had broken up and the publicity stunt that Paul had pulled. So I'm, I'm gonna play that interview right now, what John had to say during the Jan Wanner interview. That, that film was set up by Paul, for Paul. That's one of the main reasons the Beatles ended. Because uh, I can't speak for George, but I have, I pretty damn well know we got fed up of of being sidemen for Paul. After Brian died, that's what happened. Began to happen to us, you know. And the the camera work was set up to show Paul and not to show anybody else. And that's how I felt about. It. And on top of that, the people that cut it, cut it as Paul is God, and we're just lying around there, you know. And that's what I felt. You know? And I knew there were some shots of Yoko and, and me that had been just chopped out of the film for no other reason than the people were oriented towards Engelbert Humberdinck. You know, and that's I felt. So that's kind of where John came out on the whole Let It Be project. Uh, I think until the time he died, he would talk about it, about the fact that it was Paul's vanity project, that he and George weren't really interested, that Paul kind of coerced them or pushed them into do it. He talks about the fact that after Brian Epstein died, Paul tried to take control of the group and was forcing the Beatles to do projects that they really weren't interested in, and that Paul was the one who wanted to keep the group together, and that Paul wanted them to go on tour. Paul wanted them to do Beatle movies. Paul wanted them to do live performances. Paul wanted them to go back to the small club. He would talk about all these things as though, you know, John didn't have any say. John was just going along to kind of keep the peace. And so I don't think it's really fair to Paul McCartney. If you've seen, especially the Get Back documentary, where Paul seems, or I'm sorry, where John seems very enthusiastic at times about some of the suggestions that are going around about doing a live show. After George leaves the band, John is very much saying, I still want to be a Beatle. I still think we should carry on. So I think it's a little disingenuous on John's part, but some of that might be a little bit misremembering or his memory is being clouded by the fact that the Let It Be movie was so close in proximity to uh, Paul McCartney leaving the band. And that really kind of started all of the, the fighting between the two of them. They were doing diss tracks back and forth, um, kind of getting at each other. Although I think it's nice that they eventually did kind of reconcile. Uh, they did a hangout during John's last weekend and they remained friends up until John's death. But as far as interviews that John's given about the Let It Be project and the Get Back sessions, I think you really struggle hard to find him say anything positive about it or say anything that didn't imply it was strictly a Paul project and that it was something Paul wanted to do. So anyway, let me know if you um, feel any differently about it. But anyway, that's uh, my take on it. Hope you're doing well and take care.